Welcome to my sixth game rigging tutorial. We're going to continue rigging up this low poly goblin character from the same place we left off in the last video. Although since then I've also rigged up the right leg in exactly the same way as the left. I've also added in a toe wiggle control to both legs. So just wiggle the toes. And this was set up exactly the same way as the toe lift control. So it was simply an extra attribute added and then a direct connection from the toe wiggle joint. Quickly find that. The toe wiggle reverse foot joint as directly connected to the control. And that's what you get. I've also parent constrained the foot switch control to the main knee joint. Uh, this way it will follow along with the rig or follow the leg and it will also follow whichever leg is in control. So if we switch to forward K it quite happily follows it. This makes it a lot easier to find so you can uh, make the switch back and forth and you know where the control is. Okay, let's zero that light. Okay, next we're going to move on to the arms. I'm going to set these up similar to, to the legs. So we have IK forward K switching, but the hand isn't going to need anything quite as advanced as the reverse foot on the leg controls. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate the arm controls, uh, arm joints, sorry, just like we did with, uh, with the legs. So I'm quickly going to find them in the hypergraph and hit Control D to duplicate and control D again because we need the forward K and the IK and of course the very important renaming so we rename the first chain forward K and the second chain is going to be IK Actually, for the forward key chain, we don't need the end uh, wrist joint. I'm just going to delete that one. Now, just like we did with the legs, we're going to connect these three chains together with orientate constraints. So I'm going to start with the IK shoulder, shift select the forward key shoulder, and then shift select the deformation shoulder. Making sure I'm in the animation menu set, constrain, open up the options for orientate, um, these are all on top of each other, so maintain offset isn't needed. Now we don't want animation layers, um, and we want to constrain everything. So let's hit apply. And now we'll move down to the elbow, do the same thing. Just hit apply, and finally the wrist. And hit apply. So now just the same as the legs, we should have 50% following. That seems to be working. So next I want to add in the switch control. To do that I have a little hand shape control I use. It's just a little cartoon of cartoon hand with three fingers. So I'm going to import that and holding down the V key snap it over to the wrist and we need the switch attribute. So if I do modify add attribute we need the floating point um, let's call this forward, actually, IK forward K switch uh, give it a minimum of 0, maximum of 1 and default of 0 and hit add. And then just like the legs we need to connect all the orientate constraints to to the switch. I'm going to do that with a set driven keyframe. Making sure the switch is the driver. And I need to find our three orientate constraints. 
download them as driven. So just like before, okay. So when we when it's zero, we want to be in IK. So I'm going to select the constraint and turn off the forward K and key that. Do the same for the next one. And the last one. And I'm going to switch this to switch it to I, uh, forward K. And I reverse these. Oops. Key it. So hopefully now we have our IK forward K switching working. So that's our forward K. If we switch to IK, yes. Double check the other other constraints. That seems to work. Just quickly undo everything. There we go. So next thing I'm going to do is add in the control curves for the forward case skeleton. I'm just going to import in a. Uh, can I use my cube control? So we're going to need three of them. So I'm just going to duplicate it. And then just like the legs, we are going to use the parent command again. So it's going to be parent minus R minus S for shape. Uh, the name of the shape, which is cube shape. And we want to parent that to the shoulder, forward K shoulder joint. I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And we already have a uh, cube shape, so I'm just going to rename this cube 88, whatever. There we go. Now this one is cube shape 23, cube 23 shape. 23. And I want this one to parent to forward K elbow. And then finally the, the cube for the wrist. So this is and just like before we need to shape them a little. Of course you can use any shape you like, it doesn't have to be cubes. I just personally like being able to grab the control and so it surrounds the, uh, surrounds the part I want to animate. to the front view. And that's good enough for now. Now for the forward K arms, I like to, ha to add a uh, sort of local global orientation control. Um, if we look at Look at my finished goblin. In forward K mode, if I rotate his chest or his body, you can see the arms stay orientated. Of course, I can also switch this off if I want to. But sometimes this can be handy if you don't want the arms to move, but you don't want them in IK, 
as you've posed them, want them and you just, just need to tweak the chest a little bit without them moving. Now I find it a really handy feature. So to do this we need to duplicate the shoulder control and orientate it between two objects, one that follows the clavicle or the shoulder and one that stays in world orientation. So to do this I'm going to I'm going to first duplicate the forward decay shoulder control. So select it, control D. We don't need any of its children, so I'm going to delete them, and we do not need the shape node. And I want to parent the forward decay shoulder to the new duplicated one. And I will rename this one, I'll just call it Orient. Now we need two objects for it to switch between, so I'm going to create a locator. And if I select the the arm joint and the new locator, we can use a parent constraint to snap them together. Make sure maintain offset is turned off, and they are now in exactly the same position. So now we can uh, delete this parent constraint because we don't really need it. And I'm going to rename this locator. So got locator, say arm orient. Let's make this the local space. And it's on the left arm. Now we need two of these, so control D to duplicate it. And this one can be the world space or global. Now this one we need parented to the clavicle control or joint. So I'm just going to select and hit P. And for now this one can be left in world space. So now we need to take our duplicated joint and orientate constraint to them. So if we select both of those, then select our joint and Let's check the options. We do want maintain offset on, just in case, and hit apply. So now hopefully when we rotate the body, see the arm, it's following 50% uh, again. So of course we need to add the switch to switch it all on or all off. I'm going to add that to the actual control itself, so if we select it, do modify add attribute. Uh, call this what you like. Um, I'm going to call it global global local switch. And it needs a minimum of zero, maximum of one, and default zero. And hit add. And then just like the others, we are going to use a set driven key. I'm going to load the control up, make the local global, sorry, global local switch the um, the driver, and then we need the orientate constraint. I'm just going to cursor up to find it. It's that one there. Load that as the driven. And so this sign global is zero. So I want to turn off the local and set the key. And then when we switch this to local space, we want all the weight on the local and turn off the global. And key that. So now we are in local space. Or we can switch it to global. Or it should stay uh, world aligned. That seems to be working. Just zero this back out. I just noticed the time, so I'm going to stop the recording here, and when I come back, we'll move on to the IK controls.